Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. This fish in the tuna family is also a masculine adjective for pretty in Spanish. Carlo. Uh, what is ahi? No. Matt. What's bonito? That's right. Bonito, not bonita. As you've seen on Jeopardy, if you watched Jeopardy last week, and if you said bonita, you would have been wrong. Uh, they're different species, bonita and bonito. They are different species. However you pronounce it, these are gems here as far as tasty eating at the Jersey Shore. Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Let's hope for a few surf caught bonito in the coming weeks. Uh, if you check some logs from falls past, when you get a little mix in there in October, especially when we get some offshore winds and some of those warm water eddies coming in, definitely some bonito in the surf. This week, I'm here at Fisherman's Headquarters in Ship Bottom, stocking up a little bit for the fall run and also picking up my 2021 registration for the 67th annual LBI Surf Fishing Classic, which gets underway this Saturday, uh, October 9th. You wanna get in on the tournament early because there's a limited supply of hats, the, the classic commemorative LBI Surf Fishing Classic hat. So you wanna get in here. You can visit Fisherman's Headquarters or Surf City Bait and Tackle or Jingles in Beach Haven. And don't forget, the kingfish are in pretty thick. Talking to the guys here today, there are some good catches of kingfish. And to get this ball rolling with the classic, this year as with last, you also have kingfish in the mix. Um, we are waiting, of course, for those bass blitzes to start uh, later this month, uh, especially into November. And I'd mentioned last week, certainly the need to stock up now, you know what the pandemic has done in terms of getting products out to shelves. So start thinking as you head into November uh, or later on in October, those imitations that you need, the, uh, the teasers and tins for the sand deal run, and of course the plastic imitations. And many of them, like here at Fisherman's Headquarters, have the brand new Joe Bags sand eel imitation that you wanna check out for the first time. Of course, before we see the sand eels and before the heavy mixes arrive, it's bunker, uh, mullet, of course, and some of those rain baits in the wash as well. But things are starting to get interesting. As I learned Saturday morning, my phone was blowing up. I mentioned last week the offshore wind Friday into Saturday, cleaning things up. I thought things were gonna be pretty good. Of course, I couldn't fish Saturday morning. I had that special event up on Long Island, Robert Moses uh, Park. Long Island special memorial for Fred Golifaro, the late Gal uh, Fred Golifaro. Uh, it was well attended, like several hundred people there. And as far as not being able to fish on Saturday morning, I wouldn't give up a blitz for just anyone. But as I was driving, the mighty E-Rock let me know. He got in on what he said was the most epic 45 minute blitz battle off of Sandy Hook with the Albies, an Albie blitz up there in Sandy Hook. Of course, Albie Alley all along that run. Uh, that was when those Northwesterlies came through Friday into Saturday, which looks good for this coming Friday morning if you don't have to go to work. Christian Gallagher had a chunky Spanish mackerel along the North Coast, just shy of 24 inches, good sized fish. Dad Curtis said to inspire all dads to take their kids fishing, the kids can create stories forever. An ugly stick junior paired with an Okuma epoxer that he uses for fresh water. By the way, check out our twice weekly uh, spotlights, product spotlights from iCast at thefisherman.com. We talked about that brand new ugly stick reintroduction recently. It's pretty cool uh, for anybody like me, old guys who grew up with those ugly stick uh, products. Creeping while we was sleeping, that's Jose Lopez, who said he was working the 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. shift uh, just off of Belmar the other morning. 15 schooly stripers. He's using an 8-foot, 3-inch Nomad spin rod, 30-pound Nomad braid, 30-pound leader, and an SP minnow in sardine on the business end. I like to get a report like that, fully detailed. Um, a lot of bluefish in the mix. Uh, bigger varieties the farther north you go. 
I have heard reports periodically of double digit bluefish coming in and out of the wash. Bluefish again, one of the tournament categories in the LBI Surf Fishing Classic this year, but a lot of cocktails, a lot of tailors, especially along the central stretch from uh, Point to Island Beach, though I expect we will get some more of those striper reports in the coming days, especially with those east winds that are forecast over uh, a period of the next few days and a little bit of slop ahead too. But uh, certainly on the other side of these new moon tides, let's hope we start seeing a few of those striped ones. I do expect we'll see some bigger stripers in the mix and chasing bait from Monmouth County down here into Ocean County and hopefully this fall into Atlantic and Cape May County as well all the way into November. I was looking at some old video and pics on my cell phone, which remember that if you're taking pictures year to year, it really kind of functions as a fishing log. You can go back and look at when and where you were catching in years past. But I was looking at some photos from, oh, uh, late October, a year ago. Yeah, a friend of mine keeps saying, stay calm, it's coming. This weekend, of course, is a holiday weekend for some, Columbus Day. Uh, one big event from Point Pleasant down to Island Beach this weekend is Nick Honicheski's Barrier Island Beach Brawl. Uh, big event for surf casters. The cutoff for that, hopefully you're seeing this on Thursday, because it's Thursday at 4 p.m. So if you want to get in on the beach brawl, make sure you get over to the Saltwater Underground. Actually, it's saltwaterunderground.com. Look for the entry. And as for those Albies, it's just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Locally here, Bayside Dave got in him over the weekend off LBI. No spot burn necessary on my part, not at this point. South of LBI, Noel at One Stop Bait and Tackle said things were looking incredibly good locally in the Atlantic City area, Abseekin Inlet, uh, on some of the tog. In fact, he reported a hot and heavy tog bite on the jetties and rock piles, probably the best bite that Noel has seen on those blackfish in many years. This father and son duo brought this 20-incher weighted at 5.2 pounds uh, for weigh-in back there at one stop in Atlantic City. Ray Scott's dock in Margate reported this week peanut bunker and silver sides are thick in the back bays. Anglers reported success with three or four inch white uh, gulp mullets. I see a couple of those. This one looks a little bit big, but a little bit perfect. You can find them in tackle shops. Frank Rosinski was out doing the night shift earlier this week. Uh, he said uh, the, with the north, northeast winds ripping on the, uh, on the butt end of that new moon tide, things were pretty good uh, with those schoolie stripers along the uh, local docks. So yeah, we've got stripers out back. Um, although <laughs> if you're like me and throwing those soft plastics, you're also gonna come back with a lot of missing tails because in the last couple of weeks, we've had a lot of those smaller bluefish. Uh, I'd almost call them snapper blues in the back, but I would imagine in the coming days and weeks, more of that back bay sod bank action on those striped bass, uh, mostly smaller fish, should be pretty good. And I do expect another week or two before any good numbers of larger stripers show up along the northern stretch. There are some fish in the wash along the Jersey Shore. Uh, in fact, even saw we're still in that process where the, the, the time frame where we've got the warmer waters seen a few redfish in the mix, including Jonathan Sarnecki, reported back here at Fish Heads this week, a 32-incher mid-island that took a whole mullet just about an hour before high water. And don't forget, as you head farther south in New Jersey, Atlantic, Cape May County, into Delaware as well, the sheep's head are still out and about. Uh, if you're uh, working that rubble bridge structure, especially in Cape May, uh, in Atlantic County in certain locations, also down into Delaware Bay, where the icebreakers and outer wall are still producing. Rich Treadwell let me know. He was out with his wife, as well as Don and Jin Smith this week. A 12.38 pound citation sheep's head weighed in over at Lewis Harbor Marina in Lewis, Delaware. They also had some chunky uh, uh, trigger fish up to three plus pounds. Uh, you might want to try the sand fleas, mole crabs, sand crabs. I grew up calling them sand crabs as well. In the interim, it's probably about time that we all started getting back to weak fish basics. Uh, in terms of the reports I'm getting from a lot of different people, uh, weak fish action has been pretty good, especially central and southern New Jersey. I'm getting good reports who are very good at keeping their location secret. Uh, weak fish locations, anyone? 
yeah, it ain't happening. Where but I'll, aren't they? But I'll, oh, where aren't they? Is what I hear. Jake Klein is here. That's what he just said. Uh, Tyler Conrad from uh, Surf City Bait and Tackle. He was working the North End. He's been finding some good weak fish action here on LBI. Yeah. No, he's not being very specific with his information. Even farther south, Sea Isle Bait and Tackle said Austin here checked in with a nice weak fish. Folks there said more fish are showing up every day as things cool off. Joe Tomlin, Cape May Courthouse, with a 20-inch weak fish on bloodworms near the grassy sound marina good sign eddie here too had a great morning with a handful of nice weak fish kept a 4.25 pounder for the table as per hands to bait and tackle in cape may jetties at night under the dock lights some moving water maybe around the bridge structure again i would focus on some of those jetties but try the pink finesse or the pink zooms you might even throw a rapala x wrap in the mix but those weak fish are around and worth chasing after Quick update as far as fisheries manage, management, because everybody asks us about weak fish because we're still under that one fish bag limit, right? Well, the 2019 weak fish assessment indicates weak fish continues to be depleted. It has been since 2003, hence the regulations we saw quite a few years ago. It's considered depleted when the numbers are below a spawning stock biomass uh, a threshold of 13.6 million pounds. For reference sake, you can see from the chart that the spawning stock biomass level was only about 4.24 million pounds as of 2017. Hence, that's the reason why we still don't have any additional weak fish in the bag. But the fisheries managers believe that natural mortality, uh, natural predation, uh, disease, um, that is the main culprit in terms of the low numbers of weak fish at this time. The next major benchmark assessment on weak fish is scheduled for 2021. I'm not sure how the pandemic, ongoing pandemic, is going to have an impact on that stock assessment, but it does look like those numbers are creeping up, which is why some of the anglers catches are creeping up. We will find out more in the next couple of years. And of course, we will keep you updated on any ASMFC updates or Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council updates at the Fisherman Magazine and thefisherman.com. In this week's New Jersey digital edition of the Fisherman, thefisherman.com, I have the most recent update from the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meeting from September 9th. It's a part one of a part two series, but go check it out at thefisherman.com because one of the things they talked about in week one, in, in the first part of that meeting, uh, sea bass and porgies. Next week, part two, we'll talk more about weak fish and speckled trout and how the state of New Jersey can't seem to separate those two species to get a different management mix. Basically, Trenton bureaucracy. We will We'll have more information on that and if you're not getting our weekly updates to stay on top of this stuff i really highly encourage you to subscribe to the fisherman magazine bluefin tuna still in the mix and still not far out uh, i have that and our inshore offshore weather forecast but first let's check in with my friend george shower who was missing last week and has a lot to cover from the poconos and our freshwater update well, Jim, it didn't take long, I'll tell you that. You know, just blink of an eye and already it's deep into fall. We've already had nights here in the 30s here in the Poconos, and that cold night weather is turning the, the water much colder and heating up the fishing for sure. I want to start over in New Jersey. You know, we had almost all the regulars checking in with some great fish, and I want to share them with you so you guys know what you can get out this coming weekend. Uh, over in Jersey, we had Jen Wan check in, and he says, George, the smallmouth fishing is just blowing up. Uh, he's out there getting some great smallmouth, working those plugs again, and also hitting some of those big pickerel over there in New Jersey. So, you know, look for them. I know you got some pike in Jersey. You got the, the pickerel in New Jersey, some big ones. So get out and try for them. Also, Justin Lerner checked in. He was out in the Passaic, of course, uh, hitting those big, big New Jersey pike on the river. Uh, another thing, get those big plugs out, those spinners. Great pike fishing now as well. Moving into the Delaware Reef River, of course, Tim Keebler checked in. He said, again, smallmouth is on fire. Uh, this is going to be the theme no matter where you go this time of year. That water cools down, smallmouth fishing really picks up, uh, especially in the Delaware. So hit the Delaware, uh, check out some of those spots as well. Now it also has trout heating up. Our local guy, uh, trout guru, Eric Goodstall, uh, he was out with uh, on the fly uh, getting some nice brown trout. And again, this is the time of year when you want to go for brown trout or any kind of trout, you can safely release them because the water is cool enough. Uh, you're not going to kill them off because of temperature. Not bad 
prepared to keep a couple for the table as well where you can. Uh, also, Beltsville and Wall and Palm Pack, striper fishing starting to blow up, guys. Uh, this is the time of year they're going to move up in that shallow water. We've been talking about that. You get your plugs, your swim baits. They're going to be following the bait fish around. So you can find those pods of LY, all those baits. That's where those stripers are going to be. I've seen them in one and two feet of water this time of year and bigger fish too. We're talking 15 pounders. Uh, so don't be afraid to go shallow. Follow that bait and you're going to get the fish. Um, also had our good friend Josh Taylor check in. He said the walleye fishing here has been phenomenal as well. Get out dragging around some of those LY on some jig heads, slow trolling them, especially towards the evening hours. It gets a little bit hotter. They're going to move up again, chasing bait. That's going to be the theme and getting into some of those really nice walleye. Got a couple nice ones there for the table. Uh, one of the things that was uh, really a surprise this time of year, um, it's, it's definitely the time of year for it. Uh, here at Beltsville, you don't hear too much musky caught. I know there are some in the lake, but Sam Martucci checked in with, check this out, nice musky out of Beltsville. That's certainly a trophy no matter where you go. Here at a lake like this, that's not seen too often. Great work there. Again, time of year, you want to get those big plugs out, those blue fox spinners, and start working the flats out here for some of those musky. Again, good time of year to release them. They're not going to you know, die off as quick with the warm water. You can get them safely back on the water and let them uh, swim again. Finally, I want to end this week with a kind of a, a per personal proud pop-pop moment. My five-year-old grandson, Nathaniel, finally got his first fish this year. And again, it's the time of year to do it. Out doing a little bass fishing, yeah, it was a bobber, but he got his first fish. Now all he wants to do is catch a fish bigger than pop-pop. So I think I got him hooked on this one. We'll see how that goes. Jim, everything's going good here. Guys, get out and go fish. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. So Ed Plichta ran his boat out of Barnegat Inlet. He keeps it in Forked River. Ran up to the Rockaway Canyon on his tuna kahuna. Uh, that's actually Rockaway Reef off of Queens. But the way these bluefin have been there, everybody's referring to it as Rockaway Canyon or Ambrose Canyon because they're from Rockaway Reef through the Ambrose Channel outside of Sandy Hook all the way down into Sandy Hook. That's where he had the 72 and a half inch bluefin on a live bunker. Captain Mike of Anglers of Legends Sportfish on Raritan Bay said he too put Gus on a 72 inch bluefin just three miles off the Jersey coast. Just uh, that was on Sunday. That was one of a couple of fish they had. They also released one that they estimated 110 inches or more. That giant had to be released. Uh, that picture reminds me a little bit about sleeping with the fishes. Don't you? No, no offense up there in North Jersey. I know how it is. Uh, Weather-wise, your offshore forecast as of midweek continually grows significantly less friendly for those of you looking to get offshore on Saturday and Sunday. Best windows at this point are definitely Thursday and Friday. So try to sneak one in before seas get a little big. On the inshore grounds, and especially for you surf casters, a lot of east in the forecast, which could be precisely what the striper doctor ordered this season. I'm looking forward to hitting the Ocean County surf about sunrise on Friday morning because we do have a little bit of a, an offshore layover, some offshore winds, a little night, light westerly. Uh, so sunrise is around 7 a.m. The incoming tide Friday morning, if you can take the day off or take a few hours before you go to work, look for me up there. I think it could be a pretty good one this Friday morning. And again, we're just getting ready to have this fall run kick off. I really would love to be there when it starts. Good news locally here on LBI out of Beach Haven. 16 new reef balls were deployed at Garden State North or Garden State South. Forgive me, last week, thanks to the Beach Haven Charter Fishing Association, the Sport Fishing Fund, and of course the folks at the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. So those reefs, Little Egg and Garden State South, finally getting a little bit of structure thanks to Beach Haven's Charter Fishing Association. Uh, that video, thank you very much to Greg Copenhaver for sending that along. Finally, I trust you're okay, given the end of the world scenario that we had on Monday. Monday when Instagram and Facebook went down, uh, suddenly stopped working. None of us knew what the other person was having for lunch. And you guys didn't know what my first pet's name was. It was Duchess, actually. But the folks at Facebook did say they were working to get things back to normal as quickly as possible. 
Facebook was down on Monday. I thought we were finally back to normal as it was. Hope you can find a little elbow room this week along your favorite jetty. Of course, Black Sea Bass is back in place at the Jersey Shore as of Friday, so hopefully you'll find some good rail space as well. I hope to report next week on perhaps some of the locations where folks had the best action with those humpbacks and perhaps check in here again on LBI at Jingles, Surf City, or Fish Heads to see if we have a few early weigh-ins in the 67th annual Long Beach Island Surf Fishing Classic. Catch them up, stay safe, remember your parking break, and we'll see you again next week at the Fisherman Magazine and thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.